Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Today we're talking about Mexico, all right? So just wanted to mention that within the next, the first few seconds, just in case. But anyways, today we're gonna be talking about the Americanization of Mexico. Now, I don't know if I'm saying it right, and I'm sure that I'll come up with probably a better title by the time I create the thumbnail, but that's basically what we're gonna be talking about today is uh, the Americanization of uh, Mexico and um, you know, past, present, future. And I'm gonna try and do this uh, to the best of my ability, you know, coming from a gringo, um, coming from the US and all that shit, you know, with my limited uh, knowledge base. Um, that again, my, my knowledge base has only just increased uh, since I've lived here, since um, I got a girlfriend out here now and uh, friends and all that stuff. And um, things are just, uh, you know, now I got more experience. Now I got more knowledge for me to talk about, you know, um, what's going, you know, the situation out here. Now, right off the bat, you know, let's get let's get this one, you know, right off the, you know, let's uh, let's knock this one right out first. But man, I'm sorry if it's a little windy today. Eh, I can never tell until I actually record the video whether or not it's too windy or not. Also, forgot to clean the lens. I know, I'm horrible, I'm all over the place. But anyways, the one thing, the first thing I wanted to get, you know, off of uh, my chest, or the one first thing that I wanted to let you guys know, is the fact that, you know, we gotta remember, for those of you guys that don't know out there, that Mexico is part of North America. It, it just is, Mexico is part of North America. North America consists of Canada, the US of A, and Mexico. Then, we have Central America, okay, which is, you know, pretty much everything that's south of Mexico. And then we have South America, you know, which is everything even south of uh, Latin America. So, sure, you know, there's South and North America and uh, we got Central America. It's really just North and South. And um, right now we're still in North America. So, let's just keep that in mind, okay? Number one, number, you know, number two, you know, the fact that, you know, out here, yeah, it's funny. The bus is like uh, honking there uh, to, to make sure the guy in front of him goes even faster. So let's, uh, you know, let's uh, let's get to what we were talking about. To the point of, uh, you know, this is North America. So when you're out here, when you're living out here, when you're traveling through here, when you're experiencing things out here, that's why a lot of things seem very, very close to home. You know, if you're Canadian or from the U.S., you come out here and it's just a Mexican version of what you're already used to. By the way, it's so quiet out. You know, it's funny, all the kids are in school, everybody's at work, and all of a sudden these streets that would normally be full of noise are all of a sudden very quiet. But again, we're gonna use that to our advantage. Hopefully the wind isn't the, you know, the one uh, bearer of bad news here. But, so, yeah. man, I just saw an accident. These two, that them guy in the yellow almost hit the other guy. That was hilarious. So, Back to what I was saying. So this is North America, guys. So just like, you know, if you're in the US and you go to Canada and things are different, well, same thing. If you come down south of the border, things are different. And they just are because, you know, it's different people, different culture, different everything. But, you know, at the end of the day, this area here res more closely resembles uh, North America than anything else. That's why when you're looking at a lot of the videos that I show, or uh, you know, you're listening to a lot of things that I say about you know living out here, um, there's a lot of stuff that you know is very very similar to what we're already used to, because again, guys, you know, um, the, the, they uh, out here, you know, uh, North American culture is something that is, uh, you know, um, they they love it. You know, what I mean, they, first of all, yeah, let's uh, let's get through that real quick. They love hold on, one of the. Um, you know, they love our North America. They love American culture. We know that most of the world Loves loves American culture. Okay. We know that that's one of the things that you know, the United States of America um, Is a ma major export in its culture You know everything from rock and roll to fast food to capitalism to um, Environmentalism, I mean you fucking name it, you know America probably invented it when it comes to all that shit, you know, social justice, social justice warriors, whatever the fuck, all right? Um, all that shit. And all that shit exists out here too. It's just in a completely different capacity. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, everyone out here in Mexico, for the most part, as much as, um, 
by the way, nobody out here hates the U.S. They just hate um, having a racist president. You get what I'm saying? You know, they might not like uh, Trump for obvious reasons. Um, especially, remember, they voted in a very left liberal president. So right now, the president of this country is very left liberal. And he is, um, he is a left liberal version of Trump. So, I mean, that, that, that'll, I mean that, that should say everything you need to know in that sense. You know, meaning that, you know, the president out here is uh, not going to be taking shit from nobody. Only he's on the other side of the aisle. And um, that's why they don't like, you know, the North American president. Because he also doesn't give a fuck. And uh, he's not going to take any shit from nobody. And it's just that, that weird parallel, you know. So, the only, I mean, honestly, the only reason that they hate him is basically because of all that racist bullshit. But, uh, hold on, one of the... Yeah. You know, because of all that stupid racist bullshit. But at the end of the day, if it wasn't for that racist bullshit, that racist rhetoric that he only spews in order to get votes. But that's not what this video is about. If it wasn't for that, they would probably like him too. Just being honest, you know, it's just the truth, you know. But I digress, you know. So, you know, living, living out here, you know, like it was a very, very pleasant surprise that there's, you know, it, it's just like, uh, it reminds me more of miami than anything else now i know this ain't miami i know this is again it looks more like cuba than anything else um because of the buildings and uh and certain uh um certain um infrastructure things out here but the reality is is that you know when once you you know once you're out here you know you get to start re you know you get to really realize really quickly that american culture like north american culture is is also very present here so for example you know, people out here, they love, love rock music. They love um, everything that has to do with, you know, the, the whole American culture thing. You know, again, it's not just the music, but so many other things as well. You know, like the food, like, um, you know, just the culture aspects of it. You know, just like the everyday culture aspects of it. You know, a lot, like literally, I mean, this is just like America light, North America light, which is good. You know, we've already discussed that, God, uh, how that's a benefit that out here is not exactly like it is in North, you know, in the USA and Canada. It's actually, I feel like in my opinion, where things out here are a little bit more, uh, hola, buenos dias, buenos dias. You see, things are just friendlier and nicer out here. It's a little different, I know, I know. Things are friendly up back home too, but, you know, again, the reality is, is like out here, the culture is like, they have their own, they got their own culture. They got their own everything, you know, like as you guys can see here, you know, people are selling stuff right here on the street. You know, something that is it used to be common in the U.S., not anymore. And um, it's just really, really um, interesting. So, you know, let's just go to the Americanization of the culture. So, for example, you know, when uh, when I go to the movie theater here, you know, and by the way, I could talk about this for fucking hours, okay? But we're just going to see how much we can cover in a 20-minute video here. But when, okay, one thing that, that surprised me when I went to the movie theater was that all the movies, good majority of the movies are all in, in English. And not just are they in English, but um, they have the Spanish subtitles on the bottom. And when I was growing up, I remember, for example, my dad loved those movies better because just like um, anyone that's a real film guy out there that loves movies and love all that shit for real, you, you guys know, if you're watching like a foreign film in whatever language it is you're watching, you, you, you're, you're gonna get the best, uh, the best viewing experience if you watch it with subtitles because you get to really see the emotion of the actors and the emotion that's uh, being portrayed in the whole thing and and it's just um, way better. But when, and so like when I was growing up, my dad loved those movies as opposed to the ones that were dubbed over because as you guys know, when they're dubbed over, it's like, I am going to kill you. You, you already know, that, that whole bullshit. So it's the same thing that happens here. So, you know, but, but and again, in a lot of Latin American countries and in a lot of countries around the world, it's usually dubbed, you know? You usually get like that dubbed, uh, you know scenario situation but here um it's the other way around here um, from it's all the movies are in 100 percent english and they give you subtitles and so yeah even when every single movie you know that they watch out here for the exception of maybe like a kid's movie or some shit like that you know in which obviously a little kid cannot read subtitles but you know for the most part it's all um it's all english first and then that's another thing too almost every not every mexican because if you go to a little village or a little, you know, uh, Pueblo or whatever, you know, they're not going to be speaking no English. Again, you, you could find it out there, but it's very rare, you know, mostly Spanish. And in some cases, Mayan or whatever the fuck, you know. But 
Um, but when you're in the city, you know, like where I am, and especially if I go north, people speak English. They at least understand English. You can at least have conversations in English. Now, again, it's not everybody, you know what I mean? You can get in a taxi and the guy speaks perfect English. You get in the next taxi, the guy doesn't have any, any idea how to communicate with you. So that's, you know, like Miami as well. You know what I mean? It's just like that where, you know, a good majority of the people speak English, you know, whether it's broken English or any kind of English. And then, you know, there's a lot of people that barely speak Spanish, let alone to speak English. It's not going to happen. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's like a major thing about out here as well. Um, you know, so like, you know, the American culture is, is 100% here. You know, everything from Coca-Cola to, you know, to, to clothing, to, to movies, to so many more other things. Baseball, you name it, you know what I mean? Like, it's all part of the culture. In fact, it's fucking hilarious because, like, um, you know, just like, it's funny that like, I, I literally was passing a, couple, a bunch of baseball players. But, like, um, that was like a joke. Um, kind of like a... Let me see, can I... All right, let's do it. So... That was like a like a like a joke that I was uh, told the other day out here, which I thought was pretty funny. So um, there was some guy that was talking about some sort of uh, political whatever. I don't know what it was exactly. I, don't, I forgot the context per se. But they asked the guy the question. You know, they asked this. It was a Mexican, and they asked him a question. They go, "What do you prefer? What do you prefer, baseball or soccer? All right, you know, football. You know, soccer." And, um, and he said baseball and everybody was like, ah, you know, fuck that, that guy's not really Mexican because he's supposed to, um, look, he's supposed to pick soccer first, not baseball. Baseball's like a Yankee game, which again, it's really fucking hilarious because, you know, people love both sports out here and it can go either way. This is a, uh, you know, right now this is the Caribbean, I'm Cuban and we don't even play any fucking soccer where I'm from, period. It's all baseball. If you guys know anything about baseball, some of the best baseball players come from Cuba or whatever but um, I digress you know baseball is like a big thing out here but still um, when asked you know when asked that question you know to someone to some political guy running for, for office or whatever it was literally um, it was literally um, you know like thrown in his face it's like oh how, how, how dare you pick soccer over baseball and, but again it, it, it fell on both sides because people were like you know oh he's not really Mexican and other people were like oh yeah of course he's really Mexican but it's like so again, baseball, you know what I mean? That's like another major, you know, um, component to, to the culture out here, you know what I mean? And sports and, um, and drinking and betting and a lot of these things that are American. You know, remember, we are in America. That's another thing we gotta remember. This is America. Like right now, I'm in Mexico, but this is America. I'm in America, all right? Literally, it's just, you know, the Southern part of North America, but this is America and uh, I remember that that was also a bit of a sour a, so a sore point with certain people out here because when you say oh I'm American they, they, they will those they'll look if you if you come out here to Mexico and you tell a Mexican hey uh, they, they ask you where are you from and you say oh I'm American they're gonna look at you straight in the fucking face and be like uh-huh I'm, I'm American too what's your point but what part of America are you from you know what I mean? That so you gotta remember that. You know, people. You know, we we um, act all elitist. You know, um, where we come from, thinking that you know North America is just the U.S. and Canada, but but it's not. It's not. It's a lot further and more than more deeper than that. Like again, this is America. So out here, everybody considers has, has always considered themselves American. They just happen to be in Mexico, but this is America. You know what I mean? So. You gotta remember that. So when you come out here and they say, hey, where are you from? You gotta literally spe specify and be like, oh, I'm from the United States of America or I'm from Canada or I'm from wherever the fuck because this is America. So, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I, the thing is, again, if you go to other parts of uh, Central and South America, they might tell you, yeah, I'm from South America. I'm from Central America. They'll give you the specific country and all that shit. And, um, well, windy, windy. And it might be a little easier, um, you know, for them to um, be more than happy to be like, yeah, I'm from South America or Central America or whatever. Really windy. I sincerely apologize. Um, I really got to get that, uh, that little windsock situation fixed. But so, yeah, someone's just taking a picture of me walking and talking. Hilarious. Um, 
what, what was I saying? What was I saying? So, what was I saying? I know um, Central. Oh yeah, but out here, you know, they get they get insulted because they consider themselves like North American. Because again, they 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 consider themselves they they attach themselves more to North America than anywhere else. And even though they're very very unique here, you know, meaning you know Mexico's Mexico and it's crazy, you know, obviously unique in its own country. Um, they don't want to separate themselves necessarily from the from the U.S. You know, they don't want to separate themselves you know, from Canada and the whole North American thing, you know? Remember, it's all about class and classism and all that shit too, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, North America is considered high class. I know, I know, I know, all right? Tell that to somebody in fucking Alabama or, or fucking uh, or fucking Tennessee or fuck even my neck of the woods, the swamp. All right, music, music. Music, music. All right, sorry about that. I had to cut that off real quick because there was a lot of loud music. But, you know, like I said, guys, you know what I mean? Out here, you know, they're, they're more closely attached to North America than anything else. I mean, not just ge geographically, but culturally as well. It's like a major um, part of their identity, you know, as opposed to like other parts of, you know, the, the Americas. You know, everyone, everyone in the Americas, literally everyone from Alaska all the way to Argentina is fucking American. But... A lot of them, you know, they, they just say I'm Argentinian or I'm from South America and, or not American per se. They don't, you know, the whole American thing is basically a USA thing and a Mexican thing. Because you're not going to hear no Canadian say, oh, I'm American, you know, and you're not going to hear Guatemalan saying that or anyone else. It's just uh, the USA and Mexico. So, whew. oh, by the way, it's like crazy hot today. It's uh, early September. But it's like, it's like barely 11 in the morning, like 10.45, 10.30. And it's already like 95 with 95% humidity, which uh, this is probably the hottest it's been all year. But that's why like the wind is good and it feels good because uh, it's so hot. But again, guys, you know, a place like Mexico, believe it or not, shares more in common. Yeah, sorry, I know it was loud. But a place like Mexico actually shares, you know, way more in common. Um, with the US than most people even think of you know and again even even the typical person out here in Mexico they they themselves uh, they, they, a, lot, a lot of times they're even a little embarrassed or a little apprehensive about you know stating how how, how close their culture is to the North American um, American culture you know what I mean I mean for reals because it, it goes on so much so many things and then you know another added you know part to to this whole thing out here is the fact that out here in uh in mexico is also like a bit of a melting pot now there's tons of melting pots all over the americas and like again if you go to peru oh more music you know but like if you go to peru and stuff like that you know there's a lot of chinese influence in peru and uh you know just depending on the country you go to in latin america there's a lot a lot of influence if you go to if you go to um where was it if you go to argentina there's a lot of italians out there a lot of europeans and so on and so forth you know in this area there's a lot of chinese korean people again my girlfriend's part korean um you know and this is all stuff that came back from back in the day look this is how early it is she's just setting up now that's how early i am out here but anyways um you know there's a lot of similarities but one of the things about mexico that is uh changing a lot and changing for the better and it's only going to get even more uh like the united like the north american united states is the fact that um, that this is becoming more of a melting pot. It really is. And so, you know, in the city like where I'm at right now, for, for the longest time, it used to just be, you know, people that live here, you know, just people from Merida, you know, people that are, you know, from this area and that whole thing. Man, it's really loud, isn't it? Oh, there's just some people right in front of me. I'm trying to see if I can uh, get some uh, distance between me and them so I can walk without it getting impeded. And the noise. But, um, but yeah, this, so this is becoming more of a melting pot, you know, where back in the day, you know, this area here will be just basically Mexicans and people from Merida. You know, now, you know what I mean? Like, uh, as each day grows, there's so many people from all around Mexico coming to live here. There's coming, there's people from all over South America coming to live here. There's people coming from North America, AKA me and some, a lot of you guys watching, coming to live out here. And um, it's, they're definitely changing, uh, 
changing a lot of the demographics, changing a lot of the culture, changing a lot of things around here because now, again, it's becoming more of a melting pot like in the US or Canada where there's people from all over the world living here now as opposed to just a, a few people from the surrounding areas. And it's only gonna increase more and more because as less and less people go to the, you know, go to the US for the American dream or even Canada for the American dream or whatever, you know, more people are actually coming out here for the American dream. And the American dream is now, you know, again, within a decade, it's really gonna be coming out of here. And in my estimation, what the hell do I know? But I, that's what I think. I think that this is it. And, uh, and it's not just that I think it's it. You know, there's a lot of proof that is uh, pointing in that direction as well. I mean, um, I, I'm really running out of time here to really discuss, uh, you know, what I think on that. But like, honestly, I think that as, um, the, as the United States of America and uh, Canada start deteriorating, at the, and then again, we, we could talk about if it's done on purpose or not. Um, well, the opposite is happening here. It's uh, actually growing. And um, again, we don't know if it's on purpose or not. I think it's obviously all this shit's on purpose, but oh man. I'm on the wrong side of the street here. Look at this guy playing music. But like, you know, the whole idea out here. Ooh, I think I'm gonna have to stick in the sun for a bit. It's too hot. I mean, it's too, too much crowd, too much uh, traffic on the other end there. But um, what was I saying? But yeah, yeah, so like, I'm out here. Um, man, what was I saying? I completely forgot what the fuck I was saying. Oh yeah, so out here, you're gonna be seeing a lot more um, of this place turning into America. Yeah, okay, see, like, I, I, I can't stand here because it's gonna be too loud. Let me see if I can uh, just stay here for a minute. All right, hold on. Too much traffic, man, fuck. All right, all right, but anyways, yeah, so, like, um, you know, more immigrants are gonna be settling in Mexico and in Central America, but basically Mexico and Central Mexico. It's just, I mean, we're seeing it every single day, whether it's people like you and me, I think I'm gonna cross the street. Whether it's people like you and me, or whether it's other types of immigrants coming from other parts of the world, regardless, you know what I mean? This place is growing and growing a lot and growing fast. And, um, you know, you could just see it, you know, as you yourself are walking around here. Um, you get to see it in the people's faces and everything. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not the only white face around here. You know, when you're looking at other people and once you get to know the people out here, you get to see, like, there's people from all over the Americas here now. And it's just gonna continue growing. And uh, this is the new melting spot. This is a new melting pot. This is the new, um, you know, um, the new American dream is going to be coming out of here. I mean, and we might not be seeing it right now, but we're definitely seeing um, the beginnings of it. And uh, it's happening, guys. It just is. So, all right, guys. You know, I think that that's like a great subject for me to pick up on another video talking about this stuff. Because, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's very important. And I got, there's so much on my mind that I want to discuss about that. But, guys... I gotta come to an end because I'm already here at my destination. Um, I'm literally standing in the middle of a crowded street and um, I gotta finish this up. So guys, I wanna give a big shout out to all my patrons. I wanna give a big shout out to you know every single one of my contributors out there. I wanna give a shout out to every single um, one of you guys out there. That is, I'm just literally trying to avoid the music. That's why I'm going in circles. Just wanna give you guys all a big thank you, a big hug, a big I love you. And uh, that's it guys, I gotta cut it because I might not seem like it, but I'm kind of like overwhelmed with so many fucking things around me. Guys, love you. Peace out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Don't forget to check out the sponsor at the end of the video. And um, I'll see you guys manana. Peace. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. Guess what? Me and Lambo are still here. We haven't left yet. You know why we're here? Because I want to tell you all about this new store that I just opened up. Yeah, that's right. It's our new sponsor as well. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. So, as you guys can see, this is the store. I just opened up the store, I don't know, about a week ago. And um, I'm going to be selling all my merch and all of our stuff here, whether it's Lambo stickers, whether it's, you know, mugs, t-shirts, jackets, you name it. We got all kinds of stuff that you guys can buy and um, help support the show. Now you get to have your very own shirt or your very own Lambo sticker. And if you guys want any special request on things, for me to put in the store, then please, by all means, let me know and uh, we'll get our graphic artist, you know, on top of it. Yeah, that means you gotta work, Lambo. All right, guys, thank you so much. Love you guys and I'll see you guys manana.